Hey, welcome back to the Rise of Tori podcast where we talk all things faith, fitness, family, health, wellness, friendship. Uh, I have a special guest with me this week and a lot of y'all should already know who she is, but... It's Adrian, my friend, my BFF, my bestie. Adrian Edge is here today. Uh, we're so excited to have. Well, I'm so excited to have her. Uh, I want her to. <laughs> we just laugh. Like we're just gonna. <laughs> we're just gonna laugh. It's gonna happen. Uh, I want you to just in case people don't know who you are, which I feel like everyone should. Go ahead and. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Where do you live? All the good things. All the things. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Adrian. Adrian Edge. I live in Somerville, South Carolina. It's down near Charleston, uh, if you're familiar with that area. And I am married to my husband, Nolan. And we have two kids that we call the Edgelets. My son, LJ, is 14. Uh, and my daughter Layla is nine, soon to be 10. So I am in the thick of motherhood and all the things, and it is exciting and fun. Uh, that's what I tell myself every day. It is exciting <laughs> and fun. Um, yeah. And yes, I am Tori's BFF side note. Okay. This is okay. We're going to get off topic, but like I did the whole little Listen. heart thing with my hands Wait. and like that. And then I totally watched a reel where they were comparing Gen Z to yes, like millennials. That. And how like, do they do it? Do? Don't they, they do it. They do like a weird inverted like thumb. I don't even oh, know. Lay- I don't Layla know. Layla does it like that. And I was like, that's like, cause you're a whole different generation. You do weird oh, yeah. hand stuff. Yeah. So anyway, all right, <laughs> back, <hand> back, <laughs> back to the topic at hand. Yes. Um, <laughs> I am a, uh, family health coach, certified family health coach. I am a faith-based group fitness instructor, and I love all things health and wellness, especially when it comes to our kids and our families. And I love me some Tori. So I love me excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the kids thing. So before we started recording, we were saying how, so we both have kids around the same age. Our oldest are the same age. And then my youngest, oh, and your youngest too. You just yes. don't have that middle one. Right. Uh, our, our oldest and our youngest are around the same age. And we were saying how they steal our stuff. <laughs> All the time. And how yes. they don't let us, you know, be great because they're taking the things that are making us. Yeah. Or helping make us right. I would have glowing skin if my son did not steal my face wash that he is like <laughs> trying to smooth out his skin. You know, my hair would be fine if I could find my brush, but my daughter stole my brush. So that's hilarious because <laughs> Riley does the same thing where <laughs> like I'll get a new face wash or now in this case, you know, being a girl, she's older girl, but like makeup, which she doesn't really wear makeup, but like she sees it. She's like, Oh, what's this? Yes. Oh, I get like a body wash or a sugar yes. scrub. Oh, what's this? Oh, can I have this? And I told you before we started recording, I got a new deodorant to try. And she's <laughs> like, Oh, mm, this smells so good. Can I have this? I'm like, sure. Take it. Take, take my life. Take whatever. Just take Just it. Whatever. Yeah. I, will... I only gave you life. Yeah. You know, I would think that you wouldn't want anything else, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just scrape my armpits with my <laughs> almost gone deodorant, but cool. You can have it. And then once you get down to the end of that deodorant, it's like, is it working? Because you're putting it yeah. on and scraping it off in the same oh, motion. Cause it's at the end of the thing. I didn't even think Listen, about that. My brain goes, my brain thinks about all these things. I don't even know. Yeah. You know, yeah. I might just have like a teeny tiny bit on there, but it is what it is. My daughter's armpits smell good. And right, you know. <laughs> right. That's the important thing, you know, <laughs> important things here. That's right. Uh, <laughs> okay. I want to get back to, you said you 
are a, what did you say? Family, how, what did you Family health coach. Family health coach. And I know, knowing you personally, I know that you love working with families. And so can you tell us a little bit about that? Like maybe how you started, how you got into that and then what it kind of looks like now. And yeah, give us, give us some insight on what a family health coach does. Okay. So I'll start with how I started doing this. So my education and my background, like my professional experience is in higher education. So I worked in student affairs for about 13 years total. Um, And so I love programming and development and like helping people get from point A to point B and helping them to goal set and sharpen their soft skills and all those things. So that's like ingrained in who I am and how I've been trained to Mm. work with people. Mm -hmm. So when I started having kids, my priorities changed. So, you know, when you work in, when you're working with college students, hours are all over the place, you know, they're up at night. So sometimes you got to be there at night and you know me, Tori, I am not a night (laughs) owl. So um, at a clock, I'm like, I don't know if I should text her. She's probably (laughs) sleeping (laughs) or she won't see this till the morning. Exactly. (laughs) You'll be like, you probably won't get this to the morning, but, (laughs) um, and so, so yeah, so priorities started to change and, um, I was really focused on feeding my son because at that time, you know, he was coming off of formula and having solid food. And so I started making his baby food and my friends that were around me, people at church, they were like, what are you doing? What is that? What are you feeding him? Then whenever they found out, they're like, oh, can you make me some? Because we had several women who had babies around the same time. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I was like, wait, so I could do this as a thing. So I started producing baby food and it was based on local food from the Savannah area. We we lived in Savannah at the time. So the Savannah, Georgia area, some organic, but I really focused on locally sourced and, Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, was, gathering momentum. I had, I think um, I had an online store and then I had a local store, local health food store that would carry it um, and claim to fame. Uh, I don't know if I shared this with you or not, but claim to fame. No, you did. That. I was going to ask did. you to yes. share <laughs> your cl- one of your yes. clients. <laughs> one of my clients, one of my customers of my food was Paula Dean's granddaughter, she had baby twin boys and they loved my baby food. So they were like some of my main customers all the time. No, (laughs) it was good. I'm like, okay, if the Southern cooking diva, her daughter is like, yes, I need this. I'm like, I'm onto something. Uh, And so, yeah, so gaining momentum with that. And then the commercial kitchen that I was using, they closed the, um, they closed the building, they sold it, they renewed it, but then they didn't renew the license on the kitchen that I was using. And I could have continued doing it like at home or under the table, but I'm a little too much of a rule follower for that. So I was like, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do? I had gotten a nutrition certification at the time to kind of learn more about, you know, food, food and health and all the things. And so what ended up evolving was a company called Tummy Time Foods. So I taught kids how to cook. I did birthday parties. I did PTA parties. I did workshops. I did all these things around teaching kids um, and empowering them to have fun with food, to try new foods, to eat more fruits Mm. and veggies and things that they really um, were challenged, could have been challenged Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. in a fun way. And then at that moment, my husband's like, okay, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start my own business. And I'm like, but wait, hold on. <laughs> you were the only income. Like yeah. I was, I was making money, but definitely not, you know, to enough to support us. So we just jumped off the cliff together and he's an entrepreneur as am I. And that moved us to the North Charleston area when I moved here, because he was trying to get his company off the ground, I went back into higher education for a few years. And then, um, after three years, two and a half to three years, the Lord was like, "Mm, I'm going to need you to come on, (laughs) come on back. So, uh, so after trying to figure out (laughs) what to do, knowing my heart is with food and nutrition and wellness, um, he kind of like sparked this interest 
for fitness and movement. I'm a former dancer. So I was like, sure, that makes sense. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but sure. So I have a fitness certification um, from a couple of different organizations, and uh, but they're focused on faith-based fitness. So mm-hmm. not just yeah. like working out for the sake of working out, but like using your body as um, a source of worship to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, fast forward a few years, um, my, I've kind of fine tuned my place and fine tuned Mm -hmm. my purpose and really have come to a place where I realize that the places where God is calling me that that's my calling instead of trying to be like, yeah, I'll do that. But here's what I want to do on the other side. It's like, okay, Lord, I'm always asked to do things surrounding youth, kids, families. Okay. Let me not try to be something I'm not. And let me lean Mm. into that. And so I now am super excited because I've had an opportunity to partner with some national organizations, with local community organizations to come in and teach kids, um, how to have fun while also Mm -hmm. doing things that are good for their bodies, ways to stay positive. And I want to expand that again and um, really um, see how I can kind of expand that out from maybe not just my local community, but yeah, the community beyond. So yeah, it was a long convoluted answer. No, let's get, I mean, you (laughs) got all the things going on. And I feel like that when I talk to you, you're like, okay, well now I'm doing this thing. And now I'm like, you go girl. (laughs) <laughs> but I want to ask you, like with the faith component in with all of that, how do you bring faith into whether you're doing cooking classes or fitness classes or mm-hmm. teaching families how to be helped? Like, how do you bring that or how do you incorporate that into those areas that you and I guess this is a second question, two parter, but with those national organizations, are you able to bring faith into it or is it a little bit more on the sly? Tell us a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So I'll do the second part and then go to the first part. Okay. Uh, With the national organizations that I've partnered with or um, the programs that we implement, I do those in the school system. So Mm. it's not always open for me to bring faith into it. Uh, But the cool thing is because I'm teaching kids that are from my local community, a lot of the kids, not a lot, but some of the kids, whenever I go in, they're kids from my church, they're kids Mm. from, you know, from our youth group. So they're like, Miss Adrian, what are you doing here? So, (laughs) you know, I can kind of have that dialogue with them and you have that connection. then Exactly. Yeah. And really if any, child that I'm interacting with, if they open the door, I will Mm. walk right in the door, you know? So it's, Mm, that's that's kind of my rule of thumb whenever I'm working with schools or government agencies or anything like that, where they're kind of restrictive. Um, they can't, they can't restrict what the participants say and do. And so if they open the door to talking about Jesus, I'm doing it, but I'm not going to that, you know, to the larger group. Um, So, yeah. So in incorporating the faith component comes with more of my, uh, the outreach that I have with local churches. And then if I'm doing programs on my own, if I'm not necessarily partnering with, um, you know, a school or the library, that's another partnership that I have our Mm -hmm. local library, then that's where I fully say, okay, this is a faith-based wellness or a a family faith-based wellness, you know, program. Um, but and, and that's kind of something where I pray about it as well. I've had an opportunity to teach local classes at a community center here. And this is when I first became a fitness instructor. So, you know, you're coming out the gate excited. You're looking for yeah, opportunities yeah. and you're like, they'll pay me to do this. What? Yeah. But they were like, hey, we need you to teach you know, this style of class. And I was like, well, I don't really do that. I do faith, a faith-based version of that. And they're like, well, I mean, you can teach the class, but we want you to leave the faith out of it. Mm. That was a scenario where I was like, you know what? No, like God's going to open another door. If they're like, Mm. we want you to keep the faith component out of it because they, their reasoning was that they didn't want to be exclusive. Mm. So my thing was, well, my class is inclusive. Anybody Mm. can come. I just happen to, you know, include a faith aspect. And so because Mm -hmm. they weren't willing to see that, um, and it was a community like open to the community, I'm like, no, because there are people in the community that are faith-based that would want this. So no. Yeah. 
other, you know, other scenario is you're going into the school system. Of course, there's a separation there. Yes, I can understand those guidelines. So I pray about every opportunity. Mm. Um, if it is something where I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know if I should bring faith into this. Yeah. Um, and if it is a scenario where I feel like, okay, I'm not going to be pulling out my Bible and my scriptures. I just remember Jesus comes with me. Like it's yep. a total package. You get me, <laughs> yep. you get him. So he's there regardless. And yeah. he will allow me opportunities to talk about principles of our faith without yeah. quoting the scripture of where it came from. There've been many times where I've been able to quote scripture without the address yeah. of the scripture. Yeah. And sometimes people are none the wiser, but you're going to get yeah. it one way or yeah. the other. If you've got yeah. me on board you just got to know what you're dealing with. So, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love that so much. And I love the reminder that it doesn't have to be faith-based or labeled as faith-based to bring faith because Jesus yes. is with you always. And like you said, if that door is open or if I'm having side conversations, I, of course, I'm going to share my faith. I'm going to share yes. the hope that I have and, and help uh, people that you're coming in contact with. So I love that reminder. It's a good yeah. reminder for me, actually, because sometimes I struggle with, well, just faith, you know, faith-based, but look for those opportunities for non-faith-based stuff. Yes. And then you can share the gospel. You can share Jesus in those opportunities, even if it's exactly. not labeled, Exactly. Uh, and I was there for a long while saying, I'm sticking to my principles. I'm a mm -hmm. faith-based family health coach. I'm a faith, but you know, and it's like, okay, do I want to stand on that? Like, like it almost became kind of like a little martyr thing. Well, you don't want mm. me because I'm faith-based and that's okay. I'm going to stick mm. to it versus, okay, let me let me soften this approach and then let me actually pray about it because there mm. are secular settings that need what I have. Like yes. they need the skill set that yes. I can bring to the table. And if I'm so stuck on saying I'm a Christian family health coach or whatever it is, that might close the door to somebody that I truly was able to help. And then I could have had mm. a conversation with them about the Lord, you know, about yeah. my faith, about, you know, something. And so that's what I always have to kind of balance is, uh, like you don't want to wear your badge of being a follower of Jesus in a way that, um, is offensive. To, I mean, okay. The gospel is offensive to some sure. people, right? But sure. you don't want to be offensive to people. Yeah. You want to be a light that attracts people to you so that they start to ask questions about mm. who you are. What is this versus yep. I'm so intimidated because this is, you know, what it is and I don't want to, you know, so well, yeah, because I, I, labels I just, when people get labeled, you know, it sometimes can come with the bad of right. someone hears you're a Christian. Oh, Christians are all this. They're all hypocritical. They're all, exactly. you know, and so sometimes when you label it, it does turn people off or push people away in that, oh, I'm yeah. not going to approach them because they're this, that, and that because yeah. of those few people who have given it a bad name or, I mean, we're all, we're all, <laughs> exactly. we're all sinners. We're not going to be perfect, but you get what yeah. I'm saying in that. Yeah. Yeah. There are thoughts that come with labels. And so, yes. yeah, that, that's yes. a, that's a really good, um, good reminder, good yeah. encouragement. I know for me, I needed to hear that too. <laughs> uh, yes. I wanted to ask you about, so I know a lot of people, moms listen or follow me online. And so what are your tips? So going back to the nutrition stuff and, uh, wellness and getting our kids to eat foods that maybe they might not like, or they turn their nose up at what are some of your advice or tips that you have? And maybe for different stages, cause you know, yeah. younger, it's different <clears throat> than when they're in middle school or high school, or, you sure. know, what are some of the, the tips you have to, to help our kids to branch out a little bit? I have one child yes. that is my very picky child, but the other two are pretty good about branching out, but yeah. Yeah. Give us your, your wisdom. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
So if you're starting out, um, starting to feed your kids, like you have brand new eaters, um, you're introducing them to solid foods. You want to try to, I know that they say to start um, with the foods that you know that they're going to eat. So like bananas and Mm. apples and things that are easy on their digestive system. Uh, But one thing to consider is to maybe find some veggies that are easy on their digestive system too, like your sweet peas, your carrots, because that introduces them to veggies first. So they're more likely to continue to enjoy veggies as Mm. they continue along. And then of course you can mix them together Mm -hmm. to create new flavors and new blends. Um, I'm saying this from a place of having been there and had to readjust with the second kid because my (laughs) son, we would sit at the table in his little high chair for hours, hours with him, like not wanting to eat something Mm -hmm. because he saw a speck of green. So I get it. (laughs) I get it. Moms of picky eaters. I have a picky eater. Um, and so that, that's, maybe like something at that early life stage that I would recommend is maybe look at starting veggies first and incorporating that in along with your fruit coming later and then find some fun ways to combine those so that they get to enjoy them both. Mm -hmm. As you have older eaters, um, our responsibility as a parent is um, it's it's called the division of responsibility. So when you're thinking about picky eaters, that's kind of the rule of thumb that you want to kind of start out with. So our responsibility as parents is to provide our kids to present healthy options, mm. healthy options mm-hmm. for them to eat and enjoy. Yeah. Their responsibility is to decide which of those healthy options they're going to enjoy, which ones they're going yeah. to have. And so I'm tr- I'm I've done more of this kind of at this stage, because I have different levels of pickiness with my husband, Mm. my son and my daughter. And so (laughs) short, (laughs) so short of serving four different meals or like different components of things for different people, it's like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. All right. So I'm going to serve these options and then you weave in and out options that, you know, they enjoy, but then you might present something new or you present two new things and you're like, okay, well, here it is. You got to choose one. Mm -hmm. And so as much as they eat and if they eat is up to them, but you've done your part to present healthy options um, of foods that they enjoy. Uh, so that's one aspect. Another, um, another tip that I would have is I am not above hiding food. Like there's some, you know, there's some (laughs) nutrition people who are like, show them the whole food. So they build a relationship with it. Look at the end of the day, you got to get the nutrition in their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. So I am not above hiding food in smoothies in soups, casseroles, um, taking the veggies that they don't like, like my kids do not like eggplant in most form, but I will blend it up into a spaghetti sauce, a marinara sauce, and Mm. they're none the wiser, you know? So things like that, like cauliflower, when my son, this is one of my favorite things to do when my son was little, like maybe, um, like chicken nugget age, you know, like Mm, maybe two, three, I would uh, puree down cauliflower and mix it into barbecue sauce. And then he could dip that, dip his nuggets into the sauce and he was getting veggies, but he didn't even know, like, you know, so it's like coming up with ways to, uh, to infuse those foods into your kid's diet. Maybe they don't know, maybe they do, you know, Um, but I always come back at the end. If it is something that's new and I'm like, did you realize what was in there? And you're like, <laughs> what did I just eat? You know, I did that with eggplant. I made a little casserole and my son like wanted seconds. And I, and my daughter knew what I had done. And she's looking at me like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but at the end of it, I told him and he wasn't, he wasn't mad. Like he was yeah. like, cause it tasted good. He was, it was like, great. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't the little like slimy discs, you know, that I was yeah. trying to like yep. bread and like have them eat. It was like, in this little like casserole with shrimp and stuff. And he's like, I think you should make that again. I was like, when, you know, so, (laughs) so that's where, you know, it's just, it's not, um, as a mom, not getting frustrated and Mm. not thinking that you're the failure, but just thinking, you know what, you have preferences too. It may not be with yeah, food, yeah, but maybe there's sure. music or movies or an actor, you know, maybe there's an actor that you're like, I hate 
everything that they do. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Maybe watch something else, a little different genre with them in it. Maybe you might like them in that style of acting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. the same perspective. Um, And it teaches our kids that they aren't right or wrong for what they like and enjoy. Mm. It just is something where I just don't like it that way, but I like it this way. Yeah. So yeah, yeah having it's patience not bad to just try if it. they don't like my whole family, people are going to be like, ah, my whole family does not like tomatoes. <laughs> None of us like tomatoes. <laughs> now, fresh tomatoes. I'll eat salsa. I'll eat spaghetti sauce, yes. but we just do not like cut up chunked tomatoes, but yeah. that's okay. You know, like it's, <laughs> doesn't mean we're bad. It doesn't mean we're any less healthy. It's just, we just do not prefer that. Yeah. And that's okay. And that's why there are, um, there's an array of colors in the fruits and vegetables that we have that you can get, uh, tons of phytonutrients from all of those different options. You don't have have to eat one specific food to get it all. Like that's why there's, there's different options and that's okay. Yeah. Another thing I've heard is having your kids as they get able to help you cook in the kitchen, because then they're more likely to try it if they've helped. I've seen this with Cora. So I don't even remember what we made, but this was recently. She helped me make something for dinner and she tried it that night and she actually enjoyed it. And I was like, win. That's awesome. Yes. Um, so when, as they get older and are able to help, then they're more likely to try it because they had a hand in helping. That's right. It. And so. you, it doesn't even have to, you don't even have to wait until they get older. That was what tummy time foods is about. It was about getting yeah. kids in the kitchen early so that they can start building a healthy relationship with yeah. food and trying new things. And then you can say, Oh, I made this veggie, uh, this veggie meal or whatever. And so I'm going to try it. And it was actually good because they mm-hmm. made it and they're proud of it. And so they want yeah. to, they want you to enjoy it too. So, um, I mean, even kids as young as two, two, three, you can get yep. them in the there to help you roll some meatballs or, oh, yeah. you know, scoop out some, you know, some muffin batter into a 10. And the yeah. cool thing about cooking with your kids is that you can also incorporate the subjects that they're going through in school in the uh, kitchen. Yeah. So yep. uh, you can talk about math, you can talk about science, you can talk about all these things while you're cooking, because cooking is actually science. Like, you know, that's what it is, but you can also incorporate history and culture and all those things. So it's a really kind of nice way to sneak in some education Yeah, and if you have fun and make it fun. And if you have teenagers or maybe those middle schoolers that are kind of pulling away a little bit and not really Mm -hmm. wanting to talk as much, ask them to come help you like make something Mm -hmm. in the kitchen, like give them a job to do, have them slice up some peppers or whatever. And that helps to drop that guard and you can ask questions or have them start talking. And it's a nice kind of non-threatening way to, um, to bring people together. Food, food has that effect. It has an effect of like, it can be a detriment to us or it can be (laughs) a health and a benefit to us. And so we have to enter this, um, this with the mindset of I'm going to use food to my advantage, you know, and, and, and see all the fun ways that, that it can be done. Yeah. I've always heard that, uh, with teenagers that non-threatening, like shoulder to shoulder conversation rather than face to face. So cooking or going for a walk or doing something together engages them, but it's like you said, non-threatening or less threatening because you're not just sitting down. Okay. Tell me, talk to me. You know, it's, it's, you're interacting and they're more likely to to let their guard down and they're more likely to kind of open up a little bit. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what, so you talked about, uh, nutrition and stuff, but what about getting our kids involved in movement and, and that stuff too? Cause I know you do a lot of like fitness classes or movement and stuff with children. Uh, I know you did, you helped do the swim, uh, the swim (laughs) team, you did some stuff with them. So give us some ideas or some tips or ways that incorporating movement, because we know that's important too. And I see more and more 
as even in my own household, as my kids get older, they're moving less and less. It's like, okay, for sure. We gotta, we gotta get up. We gotta move our bodies a little bit. So do you have anything, um, on that? Yeah. Um, I would just say maybe like make it fun. I mean, that's the main Mm -hmm. thing, even for ourselves. If, if we feel like, Oh, I just have such a hard time. moving. Yeah. Yeah. Just something to check off the box find something that brings you joy, find a way to move your body. That's fun. So it can be as easy as flipping on a song and saying, we're having an impromptu dance party, which is my personal favorite. (laughs) And if you ask them, I mean, like something that I'll just randomly do is if I see something on Instagram, if somebody has a reel and they're doing some kind of dance move and my kids are around, I'll like try to do it. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Hold up. Hold up. (laughs) And then they come in and then try to teach me the move. And then we turn on some music and now we're all like body pumping to the beat, you know, all together. And guess what? You just fit in a five minute workout. You didn't even have to try. You didn't even have to count reps. Like you literally just moved your body. And if we can turn our focus, like you and I are in lots of settings where we talk about this, like it's not always about quote unquote, the workout. It's about moving, moving your body. A lot of us, um, I was listening to another podcast and she was talking about how a lot of us think about um, that we have to exercise or work out most of the time and then move sometimes when really that needs to be flipped. We move yeah. most of the time and exercise sometimes. Yeah. So it's, it's the dance party. It is walking around the neighborhood after dinner, just kind of, instead yep. of allowing people to scatter and go to their rooms or their devices, mm-hmm. taking a walk and, and talk. And again, that's another way to talk to one another, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, And maybe you do some kind of formalized exercise with your kids and that's fine too, but make sure that it's fun for them, that you're not like saying you can go harder, do it, whatever. No. Hey, you did that push up. Wow. That was awesome. The positive reinforcement. Um, One thing that I note with my kids is they, they don't get PE every day. PE is on Mm -hmm. a rotation. So they have a week where they're having PE and then they go a month before they do it again. So I love to think of fun ways to say, oh my gosh, I've got it. I want, can you join me in this workout? Or if I'm developing a workout for a class, I'll ask my son, I'm like, which move do you think I should do? What do you think? (laughs) So that gets them like more excited about moving. So the main tip with getting your kids moving is to make it fun, relate yeah. it to things that they, that they, you know, understand whether it's animals yeah. or shapes or whatever, call those, move those things. And don't be afraid to be a goofball around oh. your kids. Like that's the best. You know, I'm not <laughs> yes. worried about being a goofball. <laughs> Well, we got I got that covered. <laughs> oh yeah. We got check. We're good on that. Uh, I think also not as our kids get older, I feel like sometimes we disengage because we think that they don't want us there or they don't want us involved, but I think they do. They just either don't say it or, and I'm not saying being, be pushy about it, but get out there and throw the football with the kid or kick the soccer ball or Mm -hmm. yeah, initiate, Hey, let's go you know, maybe they like soccer, maybe like football, whatever it is, whatever gymnastics, you know, whatever sport they're into or thing that they're doing. Like sometimes we have to be the one to initiate, especially as they get older to be like, Hey, can we go, can we go outside and kick the ball around? Or can we go and, you know, cause we think that they don't want us there, but studies have shown that they they do. do. Sometimes it's on their own terms. (laughs) Just which have we have to be okay with. Like, yes, we have to be yeah. okay with, we have to yeah. be flexible. I just yeah. had this conversation with my oldest last night in that <laughs> I was making my rounds. I don't know. I know you can relate to this making my rounds saying good night. Cause I'm going to bed. They might not be yes. going to bed yet, but right. I'm, going to I'm, bed. Out. I'm out. I'm out. So That's it. I made my rounds. I said, good night. Riley was, uh, I think on the phone with a friend and they were playing games or something. Well, then she comes down and she's like, ah, you, you didn't, you didn't come lay with me or you didn't stay like in my room. And I'm like, yes, y- you were busy. Like you were doing you were, something. You were phoning a friend. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she was phoning a friend. So it looked like she didn't, but 
It she was on her did. terms. Yes, That's she right. did. It was just that moment. And then she's like, wait a second, where'd you go? So I'm like, well, I'm sorry. You need to come lay in bed with me now because I'm already. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I already got my covers up, pulled up. I already got like my face <laughs> oil on and, you know, I'm already ready for bed. So you come, yes. you know, so yeah. yeah. So I think just that reminder of. Yeah being the one to initiate sometimes. And if they say yeah. no, that's okay. It's, you know, yeah. don't, don't get upset and don't take it. That's something I'm learning is not to take things personally when they do get a little moody or they do yeah. Yeah. say yeah. no uh, or whatever. It's, it's not always personal against me. Right. Um, and I'll try again. That doesn't mean that I'm not yeah. going to. Yeah. Ask them again to go through the football or whatever it is. I'm yep. still going to keep asking Try it again, and pursuing. present the opportunity. And, yep. 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 That's what, that's what God does. Like he'll offer mm. things to us and we'll reject it. And he's like, yep. mm, I'm not going to quit on you. I'm going to keep right. coming after yep. you. And we have to have that same perspective with how we feed our kids. If they don't like a certain food and we really want them to enjoy it, try again, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, if they uh, reject, you know, your, your option to be together. It's okay. I'm going to come back. I'm not, I'm not leaving you out there. Um, and then last thing that I'll say about that is, uh, also listen to, like you said, listen to their invitations. So Mm -hmm. my son, um, he will come to me if he's really tight, he does taekwondo and he swims. So he's pretty active, but he'll get tight because he doesn't stretch. So it was like, man, my muscles are so sore, mommy, my legs. And I, Oh, I'm sorry, mother. I don't know what he wants me to, I don't know what he wants me to pretend like he calls me, but he still calls me mommy. Oh um, yeah. I, I'm still mommy too. And I love Yeah. It. Yeah. He's like, or mama. Oh, I'm mama. Yeah. No, I'm not allowing mama yet. I still have to, <laughs> oh, I can't do it. So yeah. He's like, uh, mom around his friends. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you. But yeah. when the behind closed doors, right. I'm still mommy. I know, I know the truth. I know, I the, know truth. the truth. Yes. <laughs> you can't. I'm sorry. Stay on focus. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he will come to me and say, oh gosh, I'm so sore. Or like my legs are sore. And that's him essentially asking me, can you help me stretch? And mm. so I will take the time and I will show him a few stretches that he can do on his own. But like, we will both just take some time and just stretch. And inevitably we'll laugh about something or mm-hmm. he'll open up about something. But those are things where it's not just, oh, get a nice pack or get the heating pad. You'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Like use that Walk as an invitation. Yeah. 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 You're good. You're good. Use that yeah. as an invitation to say, you know what? Let me join you here and mm-hmm. help you move your body in a way that's going to alleviate the issue, but also show you that like, I see you want me around. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. listen. So speaking of them, not coming to us or whatever. Um, I was super offended for a minute because my daughter, we were talking about like, she was getting headaches and I'm like, okay, are you drinking your water? Are you moving your body? Blah, blah, blah. And so we were finding she's homeschooled. So she's not moving her body as much as she previously was. And so I'm like, okay, you know, you should run some laps around the house or whatever. Well, she goes on Pinterest and finds a workout plan. And she's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm like, I didn't say it to her, but I'm like, I'm a trainer. And you went on Pinterest and found a workout. But I was like, oh, I encouraged her. I was like, that's great. I'm glad that you found something that you like to do. I was like, <laughs> Does she not know? <laughs> but it's that can't be offended. That's you right. Know, that's and, right. And, that's right. And but she does once in a while. She'll ask me, "Hey, are you going out in your gym, the shed? Are you going out there today? Can I come out there with you?" Like she'll ask me once in a while if she can join. Yeah. Can never film her, so you will probably never <laughs> see her on video. <laughs> Only the youngest. She loves to be on video. Wonder where she gets that from. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> But once in a while, she'll ask me and, you know, so yeah, but yeah, yeah, not to be offended if they do not realize the greatness they have in front of them. I'm telling you, you know what? (laughs) They'll come around. They'll come around. They'll be like, I have this gym, this like diamond in the rough the whole time. (laughs) Exactly. I love it. 
Um, so one final question I want to ask you before we wrap up is yeah. just, I know there's, you know, we say, how do you balance it? And to me, I, sometimes I just, I don't, you can speak on this, but I, for me, I'm like, I don't really feel like I balance things it's sometimes things. So for you, how do you juggle balance workout motherhood, you know, being an entrepreneur, your husband, you know, connecting with your husband, uh, taking care of yourself, health, you know, all those things, like, how do you, or what do you focus on when thinking of those, those things? Yeah. Uh, so first I'll say anyone who says that they've got it down to a T is lying. Okay. So don't (laughs) ever think that it's going to be perfect. Even when you find the system and you're like, this is amazing. Uh, there's always going to be something that's going to pop up and you're going to have to shift and adjust. I think the first thing is being intentional with your time and sitting down and actually planning out your time. Whether you are a natural born planner or you uh, are more of, of a spontaneous person, we all have to have some level of discipline, boundaries, guidelines, whatever you want to call it in our lives so that we know what needs to be done. So if mm-hmm. you have a due date, it's like, how are you going to get that project done or that assignment done or that shopping done, whatever it is? by that deadline, you have to, you know, sometimes we mentally work ourselves backwards to Mm. figure out the steps, but putting it down on paper is super helpful because I don't know about you, but if I don't write it down, I will easily forget. And then I'll pretend like I never heard of what you're talking about because it it wasn't on paper. It wasn't written down or I didn't type it into my checklist on my phone. Mm -hmm. So first is just finding a system that works for you that you can write everything down. Maybe it's the to-do list app in your phone. Maybe it's an actual physical planner. I have one notebook, uh, like a journal that I use to write everything in that way it's all in one spot. And then I can like, then go out and disperse this to this calendar, this to this note, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So whatever, whatever you need to do to stay on top of what's coming in, do that. The other piece is um, have a handle on what's going out, like that energy that you are expending. Mm-hmm. So um, I've I've kind of in the last year or so gotten a little more into kind of like syncing your cycle and kind of thinking about where your energy uh, is best used and mm-hmm. um, all those things. And so listening to your body when you feel, okay, I am super energized. I Mm want to get some stuff done, maximizing those times so that you can get as much work done. And then when you're like, I can't focus, I just really need to rest. My body Mm -hmm. isn't feeling the best lean into that because it's your body telling you that you need rest. So, Mm -hmm. um, those two things would just be like just basic general, um, that could help anyone, you know, regardless of your situation, finding a system that works and then listening to your body when Mm -hmm. you know that you need to pull back, be able to pull back and communicate that with the people around you. Mm -hmm. Um, Hey, I am going to get to this, but today I really do need to take some rest. And then what that does is that gives them permission to rest when they feel Mm, like they need to, so that we're not always uh, projecting this. I do everything excellent all the time. No, sometimes I do need to, yeah, I do need to pull back and I do need to rest so that when I come out of my rest, I can bring the excellence. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good reminder in that like ebb and flow of being aware of when Mm -hmm. you have that energy, but then sometimes you're not going to. And yeah, it was women. It fluctuates so much that that's why I always try and remind um, like my clients and students and stuff of learning their body and the cues and the signals that their bodies are sending them. Don't ignore them. Pay attention to like my daughter. Oh, I have a headache or, okay, well let's, let's see. Did you get enough sleep? Are you drinking your water? Are you moving your body? Are you, you know, be paying attention to, or what we're eating, what we're putting in our bodies. How is this making me feel when I eat this? I don't feel great or I get a headache or I don't sleep as well, whatever it is. 
So yeah, that's a great reminder yeah. in that. Um, I also feel like seasons too, like there's going to be seasons where when your kids are real little and you are just, I feel yeah. physically exhausted and it's just more demands or maybe your husband went back to work full time or he came to work from home and, you know, it's just, it's a different, it looks different and remembering yeah. that just because you're in a certain season or it looks a yeah. certain way, doesn't mean it will always be like that. Exactly. Some seasons are more mentally draining. I know as my kids get older, it's more mentally exhausting than yeah. the physical part as when they were little. So yeah. And that, that great. gives me encouragement and hope that, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, the season, I mean, I know we're yeah. going to enter a different season when we'll have to adjust and figure that out, but yeah, it's just a season and it will, it will. It's just like when, like, if you're working and you know that you're going on vacation, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to schedule meetings because I'm not going to be here. I'm on mm -hmm. vacation. So you're making the allowance to be out of the office or to be offline, to go on vacation, to do those things. It's the same process for every component of our lives. So if, if it's back to school season, maybe I'm not going to launch that big program, you know, yeah. that I wanted to around the same time, because I want, I mean, depending on your priorities, but I want to be yeah. there, you know, for my kids, I want us to figure out what our new schedule is going to feel like and make sure they're on top of things. Yeah. Give them like, give us some time to come out of that before I start something. So that's why I said, find something that you can kind of organize your, to do's, your tasks, your mm -hmm. projects, your goals, so that as you look at it, you can say, okay, this is what's going on at this time of year or in my life right now, yeah. or something is happening. Let me adjust this goal. It doesn't mean it won't happen. Let me adjust mm -hmm. that goal or let me adjust the amount of things that are on my plate to a time when I know that I have more energy. January for me is yeah. usually like all the things I'm going to start and it's going to be amazing. This is the new Adrian, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. This year I have eased into the new yeah. year and I have not planned any major programs or events, yeah. or I haven't gotten involved in anything this month because I'm like, I need a month to just listen to the Lord, to figure yeah. out, Hey, what, what, what in the world <laughs> do you want me yeah. to do Lord? <laughs> like, what is it now? Yeah. Stuff will start to pop off in February, sure. yep. but I'm giving myself the first month to just say, Hey, pour into you so that you will have a reserve to then pour out to everybody else. Because if you don't give yourself those times, you will run dry, you will mm -hmm. get burnt out and then you will lash out and shut down. And then nothing, you know, no one benefits from that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. definitely take advantage of, like you said, kind of those peaks and valleys of time, mm -hmm. of energy, of projects of things going on and adjust what you're doing so that you can allow those, those seasons in your life to flow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's good. Okay. Last question. And this, you will like this one because we yes, <laughs> had yes. this one in the past, but what is bringing you joy or what has brought you joy in the last week or month? What, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever amount of time you want to use, what is bringing you joy? Okay. I have a good one. So, um, as I talked about kind of how I got into nutrition and wellness and fitness and all the things, um, I kind of skated over the fact of like, I tried different stuff within fitness. Like I, I, you know, I didn't want to be the next Tory, but, you know, <laughs> trying to like, you know, have the weekly classes and do the adults and all that kind of stuff. And it was fun and I enjoyed it, but I got pulled over more to kids. And so mm. I'm in this season now of like accepting, Hey, yep. the working with women that is going to come naturally because I'm working with their kids. But sure. like, let me lean into these spaces yep. of where I am finding more opportunities and more joy and, you know, being able to use my experiences and stuff. So yeah, um, again, using January is that time to like, really like lean into that. I went to a women's self-defense class at my son's Taekwondo studio last week. And we were introducing ourselves around the circle. And when we were getting ready to line up to start, like, you know, kicking and punching, yeah. uh, my daughter was there, I was there. And then 
another lady had her daughter who was about the same age as Layla, about kind of like maybe nine or 10. She, she yells across. She's like, Hey, Hey, didn't you do that, that power thing at my school? And I was like, project power. She was like, yeah. And I was like, that was me. Layla's like, that oh was me God. too. Cause she came, she would come <laughs> yeah, with yeah. me. And she was like, you were so cool. I had so much fun <laughs> to me. That was like, I'm just trying to learn how to be a deadly weapon on the streets. Right? Like that's what I'm trying to do in this <laughs> self-defense class. Okay. Don't mess She's with me. like, don't mess with me. Okay. I know too much. All right. Um, but she was like, Hey, I remember you. I remember what you did. That was awesome. I had fun. And does she remember like some of the stuff that I taught them in that class? Maybe, but at least that was to me, I felt like it was God giving me this like little reminder, what Mm -hmm. you do matters and where I have you placed matters. Like looking at her and her mom was like, what, you know, cause I didn't interact with the parents. So her mom yeah. is like, Oh, hi, nice to meet you. You know? That's so like, awesome. it was just a nice kind of, um, I think like a nice kind of sneak peek into what God has in store. Like yeah. that just a little to God me, wink, a little God wink. Yes. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It was awesome. So that's, that's, stuck with me and to come um, from a child yeah. you know that yeah normally they are like they see you because right. I taught um those classes at um the summer camp last year for the kids and so when they see you they're like they look and they're like right they recognize right. you but they don't ever say anything they're just kind of like mm, there's that lady you know but for her to speak exactly. up and say that yeah that's... hey I mean yelled hey <laughs> hey aren't you I was like it was me that was me <laughs> so, yeah, awesome. that was awesome that is what is bringing that. me joy is seeing confirmation from the Lord yes that I'm yeah. on the right track yeah that's funny because my joy is very similar but different but uh la- a couple weeks ago I spoke at our mops group at church Mm-hmm. And I talked about our, our mindset, what we think about, you know, our thoughts matter, all that stuff. And today was the next meeting <clears throat> after that. So we haven't met in a couple of weeks. And one of the ladies came up to me and same thing. She was like, so that was my very first mops meeting. I've never been to mops before. And she was like, what you said was confirmation of yes. what I've been praying about, what I've been seeking the Lord on. And she's like, God just used you to just hit it home. And I was like, yes, yes. the Lord used to me because yes. it wasn't me at all. But yes. and she's like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but just that same thing, like that confirmation of thing and just thank you, yeah. Lord. Thank you for yes. allowing me to yes. be able to share and help minister and um, love on whether it's kids or women or whatever. Thank you for, yeah. you know, inviting me into this and allowing me to do this. So to Absolutely. hear that was like, okay, like, yeah, good. God We're is doing it. We're he doing spoke because sometimes Lord. you're like, you know, you're like, okay, right. You, you like, know, but I, I did it. I said what was on the paper, sure. but and you're obedient and you're like, God, yeah. it's up to you. You know, it's in your hands, you know, what happens, but to hear that is, is good. That's why I try and encourage yes. people to, if someone's spoken something over you into you has made a difference, tell them, remind them yes. your pastor, your, your leaders at church, whoever it is, a friend, like tell them. Because it is, it's nice to hear. And sometimes you need those little God winks of, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, yeah. Lord. Like, yeah, you know, just those little reminders that, yeah, making a difference and an impact. So, absolutely. That's so awesome. good. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. Yes, and of it's course. so weird because <laughs> we have our podcast, which has not. <laughs> We haven't met for that in a very long time, but I was like, <laughs> Hey, we got to do this. We got to, that's right. So. That's right. Our schedules are all over the place, but the Lord allowed oh, us to do goodness. this. So yes, <laughs> it's good. It was good. Yes. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on and thank you, you so all much. for listening. If you have any questions or anything that topics you want to hear us talk about in the future, 
Any guests you want to come on, let me know. But I thank you. I thank Adrian once again, and we will see you on the next one. <laughs>